Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's episode we're going to be running through some things that you must do on your machine before you install your operating system. So if you've just built yourself a PC or you built yourself a server or a NAS server, these are some of the critical things that you need to do on your machine before you install the operating system. So we're going to be running through um, a few things from in, um, updating the BIOS to checking your hardware is being um, recognized by the um, motherboard. And finally, we'll be looking at um, some RAM optimizations in enabling the XMP profile, as well as doing some um, memory tests on your RAM. So if you guys are interested in that, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified of any new uploads. And if you guys are ready, we're just going to get straight into it. So now we've done with the installation of all their hardware, we're going to boot the system for the first time. So the first thing we need to do when we are building any system is to make sure the hardware is being recognized. So I've come into the UEFI BIOS screen and um, we need to check a few things here. So now you can see up on this top hand corner here that we have the um, processor being red and the clock speed. We also can see that both of our, um, our memory sticks are being read by the BIOS. Um, we can see that the, the clock is 4,800 at the moment, so that's the base clock. Um, we are going to enable XMP profile, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that after, but we'll just keep going at the moment. So we need to make sure that our storage device is being read as well. So now we can see that under the M.2 first, the first M.2 slot, we can see our, our drive is being read, our Samsung SSD 990 EVO Plus. What we're also going to look at now as well is to make sure that the um, temperature of the device is stable. If you see that your um, device is going high really quickly or anything like that or changing dramatically, then there might be a problem with your, your fan, uh, your CPU fan. And if you're using a pump, maybe it's not connected properly. So it might be worth checking that. But we've got pretty stable reading here on the temperature, so this should be absolutely fine. Um, we can see the fan speed here from the CPU fan. When I initially installed it, I installed the CPU fan uh, on the um, Char Fan 1. So I had to switch that back across. And um, so that was pretty simple enough. Just moved it from one slot to the other. So the standard fans on the Johnsbo N3 case, the back two fans, you can't have any control over them unless you um, basically replace them with some PMW fans and have them directly connected to the motherboard. Then you'll be able to control the fan speeds on there. Um, this is the other two fan head headers that we have on this motherboard here, which we can connect them to and then we can control the fan speed. But right now there's one, one speed on them back fans and um, I don't know if you can hear on the microphone, but they are pretty loud. Um, I might I may even replace them uh, with some Noctua ones um, at later dates, but right now I'm just going to keep it the way it is. And yeah, so I'm pretty happy with everything as it is right now. What I will be doing, because the um, XMP profile here, what this allows you to do is if you select the XMP profile, you can clock the, um, the RAM at, the def at what the, um, the advertised speed is, which is 5,200. So if you don't enable the XMP profile, um, it, will sit at the, it will stay at the base clock of 4,800. Now the reason why I, um, right now I'm not going to enable it right this second, is because I want to check the firmware on the motherboard. It's a good practice to uh, make sure that the firmware is up to date because um, when you're enabling XMP profile, sometimes the RAM can be newer than the motherboard has been issued and there could be some instability issues with that. So that's why I always recommend to, um, to before you enable an XMP profile, um, just basically getting the BIOS for your system and then, um, and then adding it to the, um, and then updating the motherboard before enabling XMP profile. So we're gonna be doing that as well. Um, yeah, so that's the next stage. I'm gonna go onto the manufacturer's website, the, AS, the ASROC website, and I'm gonna find my model, and I'm gonna download the latest um, BIOS, and then I'm gonna put it on a USB stick, and I'm gonna flash it. So that's what we're gonna do next. So as you can see from the BIOS menu here, we can see that the um, firmware version is 11.10, which is indicated here at the top. Now, if we go across to the manufacturer's website, which is ASROC's uh, Z790M. So on the host website here, we can see um, that we have the, the motherboard. And if you scroll down here under support, 
So you just click that to support and then you can click on the BIOS and you can see the latest version is 17.02. So that's quite a big change since that version. I mean, what is it? We've got one, two, three, four, you know, five iterations there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna definitely flash this new BIOS on here to get it up to date. Um, that was last created in January 2025. So what we need to do is we need to get a USB stick and we're gonna put it into our um, computer. Obviously you'll need to do this on a computer that's not your server, obviously, um, one that you can connect to the internet. Then you'll need a USB stick. You download the BIOS onto the stick by clicking here, global. And you can see it's downloading. And obviously it's a zip file, so you want to extract this to the, um, the USB stick. So regarding the USB drive that you flash your BIOS, you need to make sure that it is formatted to FAT32. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Rufus and we're just gonna make sure that we boot this drive to a FAT32 format so then we can add the ROM to it to flash the drive to flash the new BIOS to the motherboard. So in Rufus, you just need to select the, the volume, make sure that this is the correct one. Normally it's pretty good at selecting it. Um, it's not gonna select one of your main drives. And then under boot selection, make sure you click on non-bootable and then leave it MBR and BIOS and UEFI is fine. And then down here on the file system, you just wanna click on large FAT32 and 32 kilobytes is fine as the cluster size and just click start and then okay. Okay, so now all you will need to do now is drag your um, ROM straight into that onto the root of that USB drive and then insert the USB drive into your um, into your system and then we can flash that BIOS to our system. We're back at the UEFI BIOS screen and we're now gonna flash the ROM to the uh, motherboard and update the BIOS. So on this particular motherboard, Obviously your motherboard may differ. Um, you need to check on the manufacturer website of how yours is actually updated. On this particular motherboard, we need to come down to this section here that says instant flash. And if we click on that, this is just to do with um, BitLocker and Windows 11, which we're not gonna be using either of them. So we can click on continue and yes. And as you can see now, we can see our new BIOS here, which is our new ROM. And all we've got to do now is click on update. And it says, do you want to update? Yes, we do. So while this is updating, you mustn't interrupt it. You mustn't restart your system because this could actually brick your motherboard and then you'd have to go into a recovery process. So make sure that this um, is not interrupted. Your BIOS may um, reboot a few times, um, which is absolutely normal. Don't try and interrupt it. Don't try and, and reboot it manually. Just let it do its thing. And when it's completed, it will let you know and you will have the latest UEFI BIOS for your motherboard. So now that's finished, we can now click OK. And this should reboot the system. And there you go, we now have the latest firmware on our motherboard and you can see it's 17.02. So the last thing that we've got to do within the BIOS now is to make sure that we have enabled the XMP profile. And that will then give us the advertised speed of our RAM, which is 5,200. And that will confirm that. All we've got to do now is click on the save and exit. And click yes. So for some reason my system wouldn't boot. I had to um, disable the XMP profile. Uh, I've checked on the ASRock's um, specification and on the QVL list, it should work. Um, it doesn't list every um, Corsair, you know, RAM that's uh, compatible, but this one has been used on other devices, other systems, and it's worked fine. But for some reason, in my particular case, it's just not. So obviously I need a, I need a, a system that boots, so I'm just gonna disable the XMP profile and use my RAM at the uh, 4,800 megahertz um, speeds and that's just the way it is unfortunately um, maybe in a future BIOS update it might work I don't know I'm just going to leave it for stability reasons and obviously because I'm going to be using um, critical data on the system I want it to be stable I don't want to have any problems so if you guys were wanting to test your memory um, on a lot of Linux distributions you'll find the Memtest 86 um, utility which is actually built into the bootloader 
So when you boot from the USB dongle, it will show it, uh, and you can just boot into MemTest and then test your memory. You can do this on Proxmox, this is what I'm gonna be doing in this example here. But you can also go to the memtest86.com website and you can download the free version of memtest86. This is a newer version of it. Um, obviously the ones that come um, packaged in these um, distributions um, are dated. They're not the most um, up to date that you can use. And it's up to you if you want to use that. I'm not going to use this from the memtest website. I'm just going to use the one built into Proxmox and I'm going to test the RAM fully test it out and make sure that there's no errors with the RAM and that everything's working well. It's good practice to do this before you boot it, you know, an operating system onto your device just to make sure that there's nothing that's going to come back to um, cause you problems later on um, down the line. So at least you can rule out any kind of memory corruption or um, faulty memory sticks. So we're going to boot into the bootloader now and you can see under Proxmox you'll see on the third option this is memory test memtest86. So we're going to be using that option. So you select it by pressing enter and then once you go in you will see this screen and then once you've done that you should then see this menu and it should automatically start um, checking your memory sticks and once this is finished you shall get a um, result and this is how it should look when you're finished you should see a big green pass and that means that everything has successfully been tested and all you need to do is just close out of this and then you're ready to go. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. These are my most important things that I would recommend doing on any new system that you've built. Um, this will just make sure that down the line that you're not having any issues or problems that are hardware related. You can rule them out pretty early by noticing any problems. If you guys got benefit out of this, please hit that like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified of when we upload any new content. We also have a Discord channel if you guys are interested. It's very early days and I am sort of building up a community there. Um, I will be doing more there in the future, so please go across there and join our community. It's free and it doesn't cost anything. So all that leaves for me to say now is thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.